Romans chapter 2, and then we're reading then from Romans chapter 5. But we'll just take a moment and we'll listen to what the Lord has to say to us in His Word from Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7. And the Lord God, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. I want to repeat that tonight. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Romans chapter 5. Paul's letter to the Romans. Chapter 5, please. Romans chapter 5. But God commended his love toward us. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. But God commended his love toward us. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Our last portion tonight is taken from the book of Proverbs. And we're in Proverbs now, chapter, chapter 1, please. Proverbs 1, verse 24. Because I have called, and ye refuse. I have stretched out my hand, and no man regarded. But ye have sat at naught all my counsel, and would none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh, when your fear cometh as desolation, and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you. Then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord, they would none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. And we know that the Lord will bless those readings of his own precious truth. The Bible contains tonight 66 books, 39 in the Old Testament, 27 in the New Testament. In those 66 books, there are 1,189 chapters. And in, in those 1,189 chapters, there are 64,000 and 26 verses. But you know, my dear friends, what I have noticed? Some of the greatest texts in the whole of the Bible, out of all those 64,026 verses, you'll find that they only appear once. The greatest verse in the Bible, what is it? For God so loved the world. John 3, 16, but mind you, it only appears once. Out of the 64,026 verses in the authorized version of the Bible, another best known and loved text, of course, is the Lord is my shepherd, therefore shall I lack nothing. And that only appears once, and it appears in Psalm 23 and verse 1. But there's one verse tonight that appears twice. And when God chooses tonight, my dear unsaved friend, to say a thing twice, we need to listen and we need to hearken as to what God has got to say to us. 
This verse tonight that appears twice in our Bible is found in Psalm 14 and verse 1, and it's found again in Psalm 53 and in verse 1. Now listen to what it says, and this is what God says twice. It says, The fool hath said in his heart, There is no God. The fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. I pray tonight and I hope tonight, nobody is foolish tonight in this meeting to say, there's no God. God tonight reminds all of us, the man who declares there's no God is a fool. I remember many years ago in my last employment, there was a fella I worked with, you call him John Walker. John and I, every dinner time, once we got our dinner into us, we, we read the Bible. Him and I got the two Bibles out and would read something, then we'd share a wee thought with one another. But then there was a salesman come in one day, Jim, you call him, from Armagh. And he came in and, and, and he seen us reading the Bible and, and he began to come out with all the old wisecracks. You always get the boy with the wisecracks. And Jim, he came out with the old wisecrack. He says, and, and, and you always know Jim was getting at you for he tilted the head and he sort of talked, with, talked to you through the side of the mouth. You don't, you don't believe in that old crack, do you? He says, what do you mean, Jim? He says, you don't believe in that old crack there, he says, uh, with the Bible, no. Say, Jim, what are you talking about? He says, he says, you, you don't believe that nonsense, do you? He says, Jim, you better believe I, I, I believe it. He says, do you not believe it? Don't believe a word of it, he says. Don't believe a word. He says, Jim, answer me this question. Do you honestly believe you don't believe in God? Don't believe in God, he says. Not the bit of me, I don't believe in God. Well, he says, Jim, tell me something now. Where did you come from? He says, we were evolved, he says. He says, what? We were evolved. He says, evolved from what? I thought he was talking to me, he was maker, we have done some. I, he says, we were, he says, we were evolved from monkeys and apes. I says, monkeys and apes. And Jim used to carry pens in his hip pocket. That's where he carried the pen, you see. And he rattled on and rattled on about Darwin, and he rattled on about this. And I kept, I, I didn't get into the argument. I kept juking behind him like a seer, you see. Listen to me, I kept juking. He says, what are you juking at? I says, I'm just juking at what I thought was your pen there, Jim, but I think it's your tail by the way you're talking. <laughs> and I, I, I called him outside. I says, Jim, come on outside of him, and come on outside. Now look at the trees, look at the cows, look at the hills, look at the creation. You tell me tonight, Jim, there's no such thing as God. I do, he says. He says, Jim, do you know what Romans chapter 1 and verse 20 says? It says, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. Even the power in Godhead, therefore, ye are without excuse. And he threw the head back again, he says, you boys are always the same, he says, you always have got the Bible to go by, and then all the rest of it. He says, Jim, I've got the Bible, and I've got creation to tell me there is a God. Now you, what have you to prove to me that there's no God? We pause for a moment. And he says here, say not dark a day, get out of here. Now listen, friends. It's the fool tonight. It's the fool that tells us that there's no God. And I hope tonight, my dear unsafe friend, you don't step low enough to call yourself a fool. That you say tonight, there's no God. A man that says such tonight is a man who mocks his maker. And unsafe friend tonight, it's a dangerous thing to mock your maker. 
Galatians chapter 6 and verse 7. Do you know what it says? Be not deceived. God is not mocked. And the book of the Proverbs chapter, the book of the Proverbs chapter, a uh, chapter, I can't remember what the chapter is, but it says, He that, Proverbs 10, 18, I think it is. Yes, Proverbs 10, 18. He that uttereth a slander is a fool. Now, my dear unsaved friend, there's a God that one day you're going to meet. And there's no getting out of it. And there's no escaping it. My dear unsaved friend, you're going to meet God someday. One day, my dear unsaved friend, one day you're going to be answerable to the Almighty. And tell me, how will you stand that day? Tonight, God's message, the title that I've given the sermon is tonight, God in Relation to Man. Not man's relation to God, God's relation to man. Genesis chapter 3, sorry, Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7 we have there tonight God's link to man. God's link to man. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. My dear unsafe friend, man forgets one thing. God is his maker. And another thing man forgets tonight, man was made in the image of God. Genesis 1, 26, we read, let us make man in our image. Listen to me, my dear unsafe friend tonight. You were made in the image of God. And it doesn't matter who we are tonight. It doesn't matter what we have done. Man tonight has been made and created into the image of God. And my dear unsafe friend tonight, listen to me. Listen to me. It says there, it says there, and God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. That's God's link with man. Listen. It was God that breathed into man. It was never man that breathed into God. God doesn't exist because of man. Man exists tonight because of God. My dear unsaved friend tonight, you're in this meeting. Unsaved person, listen to me. You exist tonight on earth because God still has a link with you. Every breath that you breathe comes tonight from the very hand of God. That's God's link with man. The very fact tonight you're in this very service, the very fact that you're still alive, proves God still has his link with man. Many people say, Archer, I have nothing to do with God. God has nothing to do with me. Well, if that's true, if that's true, my friend, where would you be right now in the great eternity? My dear unsaved friend, tonight God's link with you. God has a link with you, my dear unsaved friend, because the very breath that you are taking tonight, it comes from the very hand of God. And one day God is going to hold it back and you'll snuff and out you'll go. Every breath that you breathe, 
Your next breath, unsaved man, unsaved woman, comes from the hand of God. Every breath comes from the hand of God. And it's the mercy of God that gives you your next breath. And my dear sinner friend, it's the mercy of God that keeps God's link with man. God's link with man is the blessed link, but man's link with God is the broken link because it's broken by sin. Listen to me. Unsaved person, you have a, God has a link with you, but you don't have a link with God. Because this, this evening, my dear unsaved friend, your link has been broken by sin. And tonight, friend, sin separates you from God. And tonight, my friend, do you realize this evening, the very moment Adam sinned in the Garden of Eden, that very moment his link was broken with God. But you know something tonight? God in mercy didn't let Adam just go there. God in his love didn't forsake Adam. God in his love saw him. God in mercy called him. And tonight, unsafe friend, God seeks you tonight. And tonight, God calls you. Friend, the love of God. It maintains the link with man. Praise God. God's link with man is still intact. But remember this, my dear unsafe friend, now you listen to me. God's link with man. is extended tonight because of his mercy. Unsafe person, your link with God's broken because of sin, but praise God, God's link with you still exists. God breathed into man, into his nostrils, the breath of life, and man became a living soul. God's link with man. In Romans chapter 5 and verse 8, we've got God's love for man. God commended his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. One thing man will never say, sir. One thing you'll never say, dear, when all of your life comes to an end, and listen to me, your life one day will come to an end. None of us are here forever. Our life on earth will close one day. But you know one thing you'll never do? You'll never lift your eyes up and say that God never loved you. You'll never lift up and say, Lord, you never loved me. Because Calvary's cross is the crown of God's love for sinners. And my dear unsaved friend tonight now, I want to tell you this. I want you to know tonight God loves you. I want you to know tonight that Christ, His only begotten Son, in love for your never-dying, perishing soul, left the very realms of glory and came into the sin scene of time and went all the way to Calvary's cross and gave his life in sacrifice for you. Tell me something tonight. You're in a bad state, friends. You're in a bad way. If the very thought tonight that God, your maker, loves you and it doesn't affect you, friend, does it not touch you tonight? The one that made you in his image is the one that loves you and sent his son to die for you. I'm telling you tonight, he loves you. God commanded his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Calvary proves God's love. You know, friend, we all prove our love by doing things, and 
and all the rest of it. We tell others we love them by, by flowers. And then you tell somebody that you really love them. You take them to the wee jeweler shop and you have these wee diamond rings and you buy her the wee ring. I remember that day. It was like any other couple. She left cheerful. Did indeed. Cheerful for the lady, but very costly for the man. She left pleased and blessed that day. She did, Tracy did. And I come trapping out after. Penny, listen, broke. Love's greatest praise. Love's greatest praise was the blood of God's Son. And I want you to know tonight, unsafe friend, you're perishing. Did you know that? You're perishing in your sin. But remember God's love for man. Man, yes, he's lost. Man's lost. You're lost tonight, sinner friend. But praise God, you're loved. You're loved. Look at the one tonight with nails in his hands and feet. Look at the one tonight with crowns upon it, thorns upon his brow. Look at the one tonight hanging between two thieves. You tell me tonight God doesn't love you, boy. You're tough. You may say to me, ah, but, ah, but George, there's nothing in me and there's nothing about me that God could ever love. But you know, one see a friend tonight, there's one thing that you have that God loves and that's your soul. And Christ died on Calvary's cross to save that soul of yours from going down to the very pit of hell. And the one that loved you was crucified to an old rugged cross. But in spite of man's wickedness and in spite of man's cruelty, the blessed Son of God loved you and loved me and gave himself for us. I want to ask you two questions. Does it not concern you tonight? You could be dead before 12. And you're not saved yet. It doesn't take long today. And you don't need to be old today either. See, once you go. There's no coming back. Once you go, there's no way back. Once you go, that's it. All mercy, all hope's gone. Nobody knows. Nobody knows in this meeting who's the next to go. But somebody is. None of us are here forever. And somebody in this meeting tonight is the next to go. Are you ready to go? Tell me this, are you saved? Do you realize tonight God loves you and his son died on Calvary's cross? Because on Calvary we can see nothing there but God's love for man. Many, many, many years ago, there was a girl in an orphanage. She was very unattractive. Her mannerisms weren't very attractive either, and she was so disliked and she was so shunned. All by the other children, she wasn't even liked by her teachers. She lived there on her own. 
Everybody shunned her. Even the very teachers of the orphanage done everything to send her away to another place. They looked for all the excuses of the day to get rid of this wee, lonely, unlovable child. One afternoon, the opportunity came. She was seen and suspected of writing unapproved illicit notes to someone outside the institution, and one of the little girls spied her running outside and putting the wee note at the bottom of the tree outside the wall of the orphanage. She snuck back in, thinking that nobody saw her. And the superintendent of the orphanage ran out to the tree and found the note. And when she found the note, do you know what the note said? It said, Whoever finds this note, I love you. The wee girl that was shunned, that was disliked by all the children and her teachers. When they went to the tree outside the orphanage wall, they found a note that said, Whoever finds this, I love you. And I want to take you to a tree tonight. Outside another city wall. And on that tree tonight, there's a note that says this. I love you so much that I died there, I died here to save you. Oh, see your friend. I pray tonight that the Holy Spirit of God would get that into your heart tonight, the very fact that God loves you. That you can see yourself tonight a perishing sinner, but you can see tonight the love of God. Friend, tonight open your heart's door and trust the Savior. It may be the last chance. Listen, you're going to hell. Friend, the eternal flames of hell, they're waiting on you. Friend, a breath away, and you're lost forever. But Christ died to save you, dear. And he's called you perhaps many times. And you've heard that call. And you've felt the tug upon your heart. Oh, friend. Thank God he has a link with you. But thank God he loves you tonight. And he calls you to come to himself. For him to save you. You're to die tonight. If you were to die tonight, you just think where you'll be this time tomorrow night. Just think of it. Where you'd be if this night is your last. God's linked to man. Oh, I. God's love for man. Do you ever think of this one? God's laugh. Atma. Oh, now. God's laugh. Atma. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 24. 
Why will God laugh at man? It says there, because I have called, and ye have refused. Long, long has he called thee in vain. And friend, for many times and perhaps many years, he has called you time and time again, but you have refused. You have rejected the pleadings of the Holy Spirit. Friend, he goes on to say, I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. Times he stretched out his hand and all you got to do was take it. But you would have none of it. And friend, we go on down and it says, I will laugh at your calamity and will mock when your fear cometh. Listen, this is not cruel. This is divine justice. God's laugh at man. Man often laughs at God. Woe the day comes when God laughs at man. Always remember, he that laughs last, laughs best. Man may laugh at God and man may mock God. But listen to me. God's going to have the last laugh. We read there. When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when the stress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. My friend, do you want to know something tonight? The time will come when men will seek God, but God will not answer. It's too late. Too late. Too late then to seek the Lord. Too late to call upon him. Friend, tonight, listen. We read in Psalm 2 and verse 4, it says, He that sitteth in the heavens will laugh. Friend, tonight, what about it? God's link to man. God's love for man. God's laugh at man. And friend, tonight you think seriously, you think long and hard before you leave this meeting. Tonight, perhaps, right now you hear his voice. And he calls you tonight. All I can say, sinner, come. Trust the Savior. Because you can leave it. All too late. Remember, death and judgment draweth nigh. Let's take a wee moment now and we'll close our eyes and we'll bow our heads as we seek the Lord now in prayer. Now listen, troubled soul tonight. You remember this is between you and God. And you remember tonight that the very fires of hell are awaiting you. But tonight the Lord calls. And tonight the Lord seeks. And all you've got to do is come. Will you come tonight? 
come to the blessed Savior. He's waiting and he's watching. And if you'd like to speak to me when this meeting's over and to get things right, I can tell you tonight, friend, you can go home knowing that it's well we are so. The one that created you was crucified for you. And tonight he calls. And calls you now. Will you come to him? Friend, come and speak to me now, won't you? Don't leave it one more night. This could be the last call. The last chance. You come tonight, blessed Saviour. We leave these eternal issues with thee. Pray in thy name. Amen.